Okay. I'm gonna. This is like the third take of, of this video. And I'm tired. And I've got to work at 8 o'clock and go to work 8 to 4 today. I'll tell you right up front who I am and what I am. My name is Karen Holland. I was born in Los Alamos, New Mexico, uh, to a physicist. Um, and when I got into school, I had a problem called um, aphasia. Still have it. It's a kind of audio dyslexia. It makes the processing of audio really difficult for me. And I've gotten around it over the years and to the point to where people can't even tell that it's there. I didn't speak until I was six. Um, and when I did speak, I was saying dumb and stupid. I was a critic from the beginning. I'm still a critic. Um, I'm a critic of everything, everyone, even of myself. I'm a critic. And it's tough to try to get into an industry where you're the biggest critic of yourself you know either you fly or sink you know and I sunk and I'm sinking I don't see myself as, as succeeding in the world um, the only reason why I'm succeeding at all is that I'm that the devil and and, and God have got me right where they wanted me and, and I'm under their thumb and they can they can push my buttons however they want to. And I'm just like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to be, I'm going to do this. And um, I'm not going to try to pretend and uh, present what people want to see, you know, because you can't do that in VR. VR is 100% true. You've got to present it how it is. Um, that's the only, that's the thing that's great about VR is, is that in VR, you cannot tell a lie. You can tell a lie, but people can see through it and you can try to manipulate the medium. Good luck. You can't manipulate 3D. I know this because I've. I spent uh, my th whole thirties from the time I was in, uh, from the time I got my first digital camera on. I got my first digital camera was a um, was a uh, Olympus D three eighty, and one of the things you could do with the D three eighty is it had a two in one mode, and I figured out that I could put images side by side, and since I knew I could layer images with my eyes, I could do three D. So I did a lot of stereograms in my thirties using the two-in-one mode from the Olympus D380. And then I got a uh, C, uh, I got, what was it, uh, C750. And then I got a D, um, or got a, another one. Um, but I've done stereo uh, imagery with uh, digital cameras uh, to the point to where I was just really having a lot of fun with it. And, uh, I've got all this imagery that I that I would need to convert now into this new medium. Not much to convert, but it's uh, still, you know, it would be neat if there was a um, if there was a gallery app where you could present three D content in a VR in a VR context. Um, I don't think that'll ever appear. Um, because that's the thing that whenever you're in CG, whenever you're in a CG mode um, and they're pre presenting content, they're presenting 2D content. It's about just about how stupid these motherfuckers are, you know, that like Microsoft, they're all space VR, is they don't know how to present a 3D medium in a 3D medium. They can't, they don't think recursively. Microsoft is so two dimensional the way they think. That they don't even bother to try to to try to um, try to fool anyone, and that they'll probably do well in this meeting because you can't fool people in this meeting. Um, the way Microsoft has made their money over the years is by um, it's not by um, it is by fooling people. They have they've 
they've done really well at fooling the average Joe, and that is they've fooled people into stop learning how to install operating systems to not ever learn how to install an operating system. If people knew how to install an operating system, Windows wouldn't even be around, okay? Because the only reason why Windows exists is because it's what your PC comes with. And the reason why it comes with your PC is because they do it for free. They give it to the OEMs for free to put on their PCs. And once it comes with your PC and you want to upgrade that operating system, that's where they make their money is when you need to upgrade the operating system. Um, the choice is that of the average consumer, pay $200 for a new operating system or um, get a new computer. And when they get a new computer, they make more money because they can start charging for the formats. Um, you get your free copy of Word with your old computer and, and either get a new computer or you, um, you know, or you get a new version of Word. And pe sometimes people will, will side with whatever they already have because they don't know how to back up their content. And they're afraid that they're going to lose their content if they go to another medium, to another computer. So Microsoft's essentially taking advantage of people's uh, own lack of understanding of their own technology to make money off of them. They're making money off of people's ignorance. And uh, they have for years. They've always done this. And uh, they're just really good at doing that. They've figured out how they can make their money. And uh, just keeping people ignorant is how you make money in Microsoft. In the open source world, the reason why open source is this is because of people like Microsoft. Um, open source, the idea there is that we consumers are pissed off. We don't give a shit about what you making money. We want the good technology up front and with us. And we want to be able to do everything that we see that our computer does. We are going to figure it out and we're going to outdo you. And we, the scientific community, are going to come up with solutions better than what the the uh, industry, the software industry or whatever can come up with because we're going to design it ourselves. We're going to, it's open source is DIY. It's a DIY mentality for software. It's engineer, DIY engineering. It's do it yourself engineering is what open source is. And DIY is what it comes to whenever you feel like, um, whenever you can't, put up with other people doing it for you. You gotta do it for yourself. And that's that's what happens. Um, it always comes to DIY. Um, punk was DIY for the record industry. It was people saying, I'm I don't I'm not a really good musician. I just want to fucking be on stage. So that's DIY punk is what punk is. Let's get up on stage and start singing. Disco was get up on the stage and start dancing. Um, the web age was get up on the star and be your, uh, get up on the stage and start writing. You know, fuck the publisher. I can put it out there without a publisher. I can be my own publishing outfit. I can put it on the internet where everybody can get at it. I can be my own broadcaster. I can be my own YouTube. You know, I can put my own video content out there. It's what YouTube was was be your own, be your own uh, television station. Now VR, what it, VR is, it's another DIY, but here it is, is be yourself. And uh, be who you are. And present who you are to everybody. And don't, don't, you have nowhere to hide from this medium. That's 100% what it is. You can't manipulate it. And so it's the ultimate be yourself, of do yourself format. And the only thing that I see right now um, when people are using these VR cameras, they're using it for the wrong thing. They're, 
they're trying to figure out how we're going to uh, keep people entertained. Oh, we're going to get on roller coaster rides and record the rides. What happens whenever you have no more rides to record? What are the roller coaster rides going to be? It's going to be even cars going as fast as possible. It's going to be what they did on the web or on YouTube of guys riding motorcycles with one on on a couple of legs, you know, balancing and trying to see how many things they can do. It's going to be that all over again. It's going to be that for people that are uh, um, on top of skyscrapers by their fingertips. It's going to be that all over again. That's going to be VR. It's going to be anybody can pull off any kind of stunt possible, a death-defying stunt. Those are going to be the people that are going to fly in VR. And it was the same thing that was true for uh, the film medium way back in the 1900s. You had people who were just natural acrobats, people who worked at very high heights, filming themselves working at very high heights. That became a source of uh, entertainment. You know, just people seeing the people living death-defying lives all day long. Those are going to be the stars of VR. And the thing about VR is that I sure hope, and I, I doubt, but I sure hope that it will never be the case that Hollywood will be able to figure out how to manipulate it. Because my belief is that there's enough involved in VR of your brain that um, until they figure out how to fool the brain with something that thinks just as good as the brain, they will not be able to manipulate VR. Because the brain, because the VR relies on perception and it relies on the brain being able to wrap itself around 